Hi. Uh, now we're looking at the 2021 AP Physics 2 fourth free response question. Um, sorry, this is a little bit later. It's been a busy Mother's Day. Um, so let's take a look here. So light and matter, uh, as usual, if I have any mistakes or if you see anything I did wrong, please comment below. Um, and I will put any corrections that I hear in, in the description. Um, Light and matter can be modeled as waves or as particles. Some phenomena can be explained using the wave model and others can be used explaining the particle model. Calculate the speed in meters per second of an electron that has a wavelength of five nanometers. So we look at this, we have like equations that we use uh, for the wave version of this. And I know there's like an energy one or at least wavelength is Planck's constant over momentum, which is Planck's constant over um, MV. So I can solve for the velocity, multiply by v, or v is equal to h over uh, m lambda. So what is Planck's constant? I don't remember any of these constants off the top of my head. Uh, Planck's constant is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34. Here I want to do the mass of an electron. The mass of an electron is 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. And the wavelength is 5 nanometers. That's 10 to the negative 9. Okay. So what are we going to get here when we do this? 6.63e minus 34 divided by 9.11e negative 31. I got uh, 1.46 times 10 to the 5th. Uh, oh, what did I say? 5, 6. Uh, 4, 6 times 10 to the fifth meters per second. Let me just double check. I entered those numbers in right. I think so. Okay. That's the speed. The electron is moving with the speed calculated in part A when it collides with a positron that's at rest. A positron is a particle identical to an electron except its charge is positive. The two particles annihilate each other, producing photons. Calculate the total energy of the photons. I think what we have to do when we, when we handle this is um, it's kind of a low speed collision. So we have to consider the rest. and So basically we annihilated the mass. So we, we use E equals MC squared because we lost all of that mass. Photons have no mass. It can appear to pure energy. So the total energy we're going to have is the rest mass of the... Um, of both of the um, the mass of the electron e equals m c squared plus the mass uh, rest of the uh, positron plus the kinetic energy of the electron plus the kinetic energy of the positron so and then each of these is one half mv squared so I think we're gonna say the mass of the electron I think it's mostly just the rest mass of the thing, but we might as well include the kinetic energy also because that's an energy we should include. So mass of the electron was 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 times 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second squared. That's the mc squared. Then the, the electron and the, the positron have the same, so I'm just going to double this. And then I'm going to do two times their kinetic energy, which is one half times their mass. Um, times the speed we got here. I'm going to say the E equals MC squared is probably the bigger dominant one. Um, so 9.11e minus 31 times 3e8 squared plus times 2 I got the energy was 1.64 times 10 to the minus 13 joules I don't know if they want you to do that in electron volts. I don't know. We'll just leave it at joules. Um, I think that's right. So we basically included the kinetic energy because basically all the, the energy is conserved. So we have kinetic energy. We have the 
rest rest mass energy of uh, the the posit positron and the electron, and all of that goes into the photon energy. So energy is conserved. Okay, a photon approaches an electron at rest, as shown above on the left, and collides elastically with the electron. After the collision, the electron moves towards the top of the page to the right, as shown above on the right, at a known speed and angle. In a coherent paragraph length response, indicate a possible direction of the photon that exists after the collision and its frequency compared to that of the original photon. Um, Describe the application of physics principle that means to determine the direction of motion and frequency of the photon that exists after the collision. So basically what the, the two principles I'm going to apply here is the photon has some momentum. Okay, that's going to the right. And afterwards, the photon has some momentum and the electron has some momentum. Now, conservation of momentum basically says that the momentum before should equal the momentum after. So we should use conservation of momentum. We should also use conservation of energy because it's elastic. Well, so it's an elastic collision, but energy is always conserved. So we definitely want to use conservation of energy. So those are the two main principles I feel like I want to apply. I want to use conservation of energy and use conservation of um, momentum. Um, so indicate possible direction for the photon that exists. I would say it's down into the right because the Y, because originally there is no, there is no, um, there is no Y component of the momentum. So that means there's a Y component of the momentum or the, the total momentum afterwards has no Y component. And then there's um, there's a horizontal component of the momentum. So that gives you like the fact that it's going to be down and to the right. It's a known speed and angle. Um, then basically what happens is the photon is gonna so because the ener because the electron gains some energy, the photon must lose some energy. The energy of a photon is equal to HF, and so if the 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 photon's energy uh, goes down, the frequency goes down. So I think that's how that's how I would summarize it. Basically, um, the photon is going to move down and to the right by conservation of angular, by uh, conservation of momentum, and by conservation of en of energy, it has to go at a lower frequency because it's it now has less energy compared to because some energy was imparted onto the electron. So I think that's kind of like in summary what I would say. This is kind of a weird question, but because there's no numbers, they just want you to describe in principle. Um, Describe the application of physics. It can be used to determine. So, we we know that um, during the collision, uh, momentum and energy must be conserved because there was no momentum in the vertical direction uh, before the collision the net momentum of the electron and photon must have uh, a, the uh, must have no vertical component thus the photon must be moving uh, downward uh, moving vertically down um, you can't necessarily determine it's moving to the right or the left, technically, because the electron could have a lot of momentum going to the right, and the photon could have like a little bit of momentum going to the left, so the net momentum's to the right, but you don't know. Like, um, um, So I'm not going to say anything about whether it's down and to the right, vertically down. M must, must have a component in the 
vertical component, it must have a component in the vertical direction down, that is down. Word. By conservation of energy, the photon must have lost some energy because the electron gained kinetic energy. Thus, the frequency of, of the photon must be lower due to the lower energy. So I guess my conclusion would be that the photon would have less energy and it would have a vertical component that's downward. It could be to the right, could be to the left, but at least it has a downward vertical component. And I guess that's all I would say. I can't think of anything else that I can really, really throw in there. But um, I can conclude at that point. I don't know if they want you to go more. And I don't think they want you to go more into the actual mechanics of the calculation. Just that a little bit of like, what do we do? So that's, that's what I would put. Um, if you guys disagree or think that I should add something or be more elaborate, certainly. But without you know anything specific, I feel like that's the principles that I would use to do the calculations.